The race to 5G is on, and the battle for talent is getting fierce. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk with Kerry Charles, a podcast dedicated to helping you face the future workforce head on. Navigate this challenging talent landscape with innovative strategies to attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. Only here on 5G Talent Talk with Kerry Charles, CEO of Broadstaff Talent Solutions. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk. My name is Carrie Charles and I am your host today. And I'm excited to have with me one of my special friends, Scott Willis. He is the CEO of Dart Points and we have known each other for how long, Scott? It's been ever since I've been in the industry, right? Yeah, about Six the time years? you stepped in. Yeah, I stepped in somewhere yeah. in uh, 2016, 2017. Gosh, gosh, yes. I think you were one years. of the first people I met. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. I, that's, that's, it's, been a, it's been a fun journey. So wonderful. Well, tell me a little bit about your journey. You know, how did you get to the seat that you're in today? And uh, I know that that there's been you just have so such a rich history and so much experience. So let's let's hear all about it. Yeah, no. So, um, you know, listen, I first first and foremost, thank you for having me. I'm I'm always excited about the opportunity to talk about dark points and and uh, share share you were asking me about the journey the journey we're on which is really what we are but we'll go into that a little bit later so um you know probably when when you uh when when you asked me that question we probably got to kind of go back to kind of my early days right when i came out of school because i think that really it probably describes a little bit about who i am and and how i approach i mean first and foremost i i'm i've been so blessed to be part of such a great industry i mean this this industry has been wonderful for me professionally, um, you know, both uh, in what I wanted to achieve as well as just an overall, um, you know, just satisfaction and contribution. As you think about um, all the things technology does from a impact on society and impact on our lives, right? Just the quality of improving everyday lives, re regardless of what 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 background or community you're in. And we got a lot more work to do in that to uh, uh, to make that available for everybody. So definitely blessed. But you know, I, I came out of school. Um, and, uh, and I got with my counselor, because I really didn't, I wasn't one of these individuals that was driven out of school, right? I didn't, I, I, I knew, you know, what did I want to do, right? I, I was an undergraduate, I, I was coming out with a finance degree. And I, I knew I knew what was important to me, right? Some of the things I've mentioned, I wanted to be in an industry that would be explosive for my entire working career. I wanted to be in an industry that um, uh, I was able to work uh, with very talented people. I wanted an industry where I could have above, you know, uh, expected earning expectations, right? That was important to me financially. Okay. Um, and I wanted to be part of an industry that would have, you know, uh, an impact on on society. Those were kind of my parameters. And when I when I kind of look back, I came out in the mid 80s. Um, uh, you know, it, it's one where uh, four industries popped up. One was was kind of the legal profession, right? And if you think about since the mid 80s, that would have been a wonderful choice. Uh, didn't have a lot of interest in going to law school. Another one um, was um, medical healthcare, right? And if you think about how that industry has evolved, that would have been a great choice, right? To be part of that industry since the mid eighties. Um, the financial sector, right? That was one that was natural, kind of my finance background. It was an area I was comfortable in. And then this industry kind of popped up with uh, with telecommunications, right? And I'm like, well, what is that? I had a, uh, my, my roommate was a computer science um, uh, uh, major and he had a, I'm going to really date myself. He had a, he had a, 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 a Tandy 64, you know, that we played games on. And I had a basic class that I, I, I did some computing and we sent across the, the school VAX system and I walked across campus and picked it up and turned it into class. So that was my kind of view of telecommunication. So I kind of researched that out and, and got started and uh, started uh, with Sprint, um, had a great uh, 10 years with Sprint. And I, I've kind of evolved um, since then, right? I, I spent the first, um, you know, half of my career really on the operator side, um, service provider side. And then the back half has really been really on the wireless side. And, and that's really um, where I've been. So, you know, I stepped out of my, my previous role um, about three years ago, um, you know, and I'm, I'm 57 years old. And so I've got a lot more road behind me that's in front of me. And so I really began to kind of kind of soul search on on what I wanted to do. And, and uh, you know, I wanted to be, you know, in a, in a, in a part of the industry that was going to be explosive through my working careers. As long as I wanted to work, um, I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I'd done on the wireless side. 
Um, and I wanted to be um, part of an industry that was, you know, new to me that I could learn and grow. And so that's where kind of kind of edge data centers uh, popped out of that. So I was fortunate to get connected with uh, Astra Capital. Uh, they are our uh, we're private equity backed and they're our owner. And I got involved with them in mid 19 and did a little investment thesis work. And we uh, we closed on our first platform company in uh, right when COVID kicked off in in March of 2020, mm -hmm. and we've been we've been going ever since. And I'm just I'm thrilled to be um, uh, part of Dart Points. I'm thrilled on the journey we're on, and I'm excited about um, you know the, the the data center space is is I kind of refer to as the one of the three legged stools of digital infrastructure. You know, fiber towers and and data centers. You couldn't go wrong in any of those three. They're all going to be explosive for years to come, and uh, we're excited about what we're trying to create here at Dart Points. So, you know, it's 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 been a it's been a great journey. It's been a, a fun journey, and I'm I'm excited about what we've what we've still got to accomplish in in uh, what we're trying to do here at Dart Points. Sounds like you're just getting started at 57. So. <laughs> That's right. I feel like I feel like that. I'm uh, I, every day when I when I wake up, it, uh, it it has that feeling to it. Yeah, but we're wiser now, right? <laughs> That's right. We got we got a little more a little more a little more sense to what we're what we're yeah. trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, which is which is Definitely. all good. so it makes it more fun. So tell me about Dart Points, the story behind it, uh, where you, you know, where you are today and a little bit about what's been, because I, I know you've had, just like you said, explosive growth. So I also want to hear what's behind that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, listen, the, 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 a lot of people that, that really don't come or don't understand the data center space just kind of look at us as a, as a single industry. Um, and it's not that it's far more complex than right. It's very verticalized, right? You've got, you know, you've got hyperscalers, right? You've got, um, you know, more enterprise uh, centric colocation cloud uh, managed service providers, which is rich is really where we fall. So at a, at a simple level, um, that's what Dart Points is. We're an owner operator of colocation cloud and and uh, in a little bit of managed services, and that's what our portfolio represents. Um, and that's that's really what our target customer base is that we're we're going after. But where we're different, if if um, you know if uh, you know Edge gets thrown around, and uh, Edge means a lot of things to a lot of people. You you know this. You run into this every day. Um, and uh, and you know I, I tend to use this analogy many times, and it's it's comical because others do the same, right? You line up. 10 people, you know, you're going to get, you know, 12, 15 different definitions of edge. And so um, in many ways, that's exciting because there's an opportunity. But in other ways, it can be a little bit confusing to the market when you kind of describe like dark points as to, you know, when you say edge, what do you mean? So here's our version, right? Here's what we mean. We're, we're not really trying to do something completely unique as it relates to edge, right? We're really trying to... Um, you know, kind of, kind of drive down what I kind of refer to as a as a previously paved road. If you, um, if you, if you really think about our industry, you can debate me maybe on time, but directionally, I'm right. Um, you want to go back to the late '90s? That's where the internet hubs, the set, you know, the seven internet hubs really started. And I kind of refer to that as as the first ring of the digital highway. And that's Northern Virginia, that's Chicago, that's New York, it's Dallas. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's LA, uh, San Francisco or Northern Cal and, and really uh, uh, Seattle. So fast forward, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine years, right? Uh, whatever time, the next ring of the digital highway was built out. And that's where, that's where cities like Denver and Las Vegas and Phoenix and Atlanta, kind of those larger tier twos, smaller tier ones were built out. So really from, from Dart Point's perspective, all we're, all we're looking to deploy is really that third ring of the digital infrastructure highway. And we're targeting smaller tier twos, larger tier threes, and in some cases, at least initially, some larger tier fours. And all we're looking to do is enable the same quality of service, the same capabilities, the same competitive pricing that, that customers in Chicago or Dallas or New York receive. We just want to deliver that in Greenville. Or Cincinnati, or Columbus, Ohio, or Charleston, South Carolina, which are the markets that we're targeting. So we're not doing, that's really our definition of edge, as workloads are being pushed further and further out and much closer to the end user, we want to enable the same capabilities that you can get in, in Dallas, 
right, in some of those smaller uh, communities and deliver it in a very competitive way. So um, that's really how I try to simplify uh, who Dart Points is and what our vision is and what our definition of edge is. Our definition of, ed of edge will evolve as workloads even push further beyond that over time we will migrate and push closer and closer to the edge. But for the foreseeable future, that's how we think about the edge. That's how we're um, building, deploying, and, and leveraging M&A uh, from a growth perspective to, uh, to, to realize the vision of what we're trying to do. In our lives. So what are some trends that you're seeing in the data center space? And also, um, Maybe maybe talk a little bit about sustainability concepts that you see out there on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, listen. So so you know, first and foremost, I I think uh, um, uh, again a lot of the trends that we're seeing, uh, in particularly driven around the tailwinds of five G um, and edge compute, are really leaning into the vision or the definition of 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 what I described as edge for dark points. So that's one. But clearly. Um, you know, we've got a lot of trends that are that are taking place in our industry, and one in particular that you you hit on is is sustainability. I mean, listen, it's it's well known that um, data center providers are significant users of power, right? And and that that is sustainability has to be an important piece. Whether you're a large hyperscaler and you're you're really drawing down a significant amount of power, or you're at the other end of the spectrum. Where, um, which is where we play, where where you're talking, you know, a megawatt or two megawatts, and it's not um, it's not as intensified, but it's still it's still um, it's still incumbent upon us to think about sustainability. Um, how do we look at at technology, and how do we look at delivering um, different solutions, right? And we've got a number of of opportunities um, as a data center provider that we're we're looking at. Um, you know, one of the things that we rolled out uh, earlier today. Uh, or earlier today, earlier in the year, is our is what we refer as we refer to as our is our liquid edge um, solution that we've deployed um, in um, in five data centers to date. I think we'll be at eleven within eleven data centers by the end of the year. And this is really uh, it's an alternative technology, right? It's more of it's more of an HPC driven high performance compute type of use case. But it's it is two phase liquid immersion, right? So it looks at um, uh, alternative um, uses to power, right? Especially around HPC, where there's a lot of density, a lot of demand on cooling, a lot of power in a very small footprint. This is an alternative to that, where where you can eliminate that power demand um, uh, uh, very much in an air cooled environment and deliver the same capability in an alternative way. And that is that is one, one example of how we're looking at sustainability to be innovative within our industry. And really, really that, you know, it 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 it, it it's an it's an incumbent upon us to deliver what we believe are are unique um, alternative solutions, but we want to do it in a way where we're also good corporate citizens of, of how we use technology to look for alternative um, uses uh, around sustainability. Yeah. So lot, lots of trends. That's an important one that's on the forefront of what we're doing, and we're uh, we're excited uh, to be to be one of the leaders and and kind of on the on on the emerging edge of of how do we deliver more sustainable solutions, but yet still deliver the 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 capabilities and the solutions that the market's demanding around um, uh, compute, you know, processing and storage at a at a local level. So Scott, over the past three years, I'm sure that you know your company culture at Dart Points has really evolved, and it sounds like it's still evolving right now. So, talk a little bit about that evolution, and and particularly as you know as it relates to the M&A as well. Mm -hmm. So this is this is um, um, this is one of the things that I, I get excited about, right? Because but you know because culture is fun, right? Creating culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been throughout my career, I've been involved in very large, you know, corporations, and I've come into and I've had some big roles there. Um, and it's difficult to have an impact, right? Whereas in a smaller organization, um, you, you can have that impact and you can kind of create, um, and, and you know that, right? I mean, you, you've, de you've developed a, a wonderful culture, um, you know, within your organization that, that I think many can, can look at and, and, and try, to, try to strive to, to repeat. Um, um, so that's the fun part. That's where we are. Now, the challenging part is 
because M&A is such an important piece of our growth strategy, and it will continue to be an important piece of our growth strategy, at least for the foreseeable future, when you, when you bring companies together and you bring you know, different cultures together, um, it's a challenge, right? Um, but it's, but it's, also, it's also one that's, that's, uh, that's fun because we can pick the best of breed in those companies and we can choose to implement how we want to evolve our, our, our culture over time. But I, I shared with you earlier, we started out with the initial platform of Dark Points in March of 2020. We, uh, we, uh, we acquired uh, Metro Data Centers, MDC, in Columbus, Ohio, in October of that same year. And then we closed on um, uh, a Midian uh, in summer of last year, right? So we've put together three. Um, I, as I said, you'll, you'll, we've got a very active pipeline and I think m and will, will, will continue. And so we've got, you know, three cultures of, of companies that we're dealing with. And so, um, you know, in, in many ways it's challenging because the, the, the employees that, that have been legacy employees, um, and have been with those companies for a long time, right. And there's certain things that they like. Um, uh, you know, you've got to bring them along. You've got to develop them and, and, and you've got to bring them into the process. We, we work very hard at dark points in doing that, right? We want to engage the employees. We want to, because ultimately um, it's, going to be, it's going to be our culture of dark points that, that ultimately we're going to have. I, I think we're still very much on the, on the evolution curve of our culture as it continues to develop because we've, got, um, we've had so much M&A activity. But it's also it's also a very fun part of the process because, like I said earlier, you get to pick the best of breeds, and and we spend a lot of time talking about this, right? Um, and uh, as uh, as we really figure out, you know, who we want to be and what type of culture do we want to have, this is really creating the opportunity to do that. So it's it's fun to be part of that process, and uh, and and it's fun to 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 bring people. Um, um, from the organization into that process, because at the end of the day, it's not Scott's culture, or it's not the leadership. It's not the leadership team's culture, right? It's our organization and and who we want to be and what we want our culture to represent. So we're having a lot of fun in that process right now. You know, I was just talking to someone this morning about this exact topic, and and you you know you said it's fun, right? And I said the exact same thing. I said when. I remember, and again, you know, Broadstaff's only six years old, but I remember in those first few years that, you know, it was a lot of fun and everybody who joined us then, you know, it was, we were creating this together and it was just so much excitement and energy around that, right? And so there's something very special to come into an organization at your place where, where Dart Points is right now and enter into the organization, join that team and build it together. And even though there's challenges, yes, there's challenges with, you know, with the integration and here and there, but you know, you said it multiple times. I mean, it is really fun and it's a good time to enter. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious about if you, you know, are you struggling with hiring right now? Do you have any, you know, are you facing any challenges or, or maybe you have specific strategies that are really working for you? when it comes to hiring. And I know that we, you know, at Broadstaff, we work with Dart Points and, and we absolutely love working with you and the candidates that we have placed there absolutely love it there. So, but I'd love to get your tips as an experienced leader. Yeah, no, listen, we're, we're no different than, you know, any other organization, right? We, we, uh, we struggle to compete um, and, you know, and, and we work very hard to retain our, re retain our talent and keep people part of the process, right? We're all in an environment where we've been experiencing, you know, some of the turnover. Um, but this is a, this is an, we put a lot of emphasis on the hiring process, right? You, you know it, right? You've worked with us and, and you've, you've placed some candidates with us, which, you know, we couldn't be happier with, um, uh, you know, and, and, but when you're kind of a couple of things, one is just generally you're our size, hiring is important, right? Because whether you're hiring, uh, you know, a frontline, you know, working level person, or you're hiring a mid-level manager, or you're hiring a, a senior level, they're visible in the organization, right? Uh, in our size, they, they, have an, they have an impact. Um, you know, two is, you know, when you're an organization that's our size, in, in many scenarios, you're, you're single threaded with skill sets and competencies. Right. So having the right person and having the right skill set is is very, very crucial. Right. And that's important. You have to really make sure that you bring in because 
um, you know, if you if you make a mistake or you bring the wrong person in, it's impactful and it's impactful in a in a significant way versus, you know, some of my, you know, my previous, you know, companies like a, like an Ericsson or a Nokia, some of the bigger ones. Right. Doesn't it doesn't what I'm saying doesn't diminish that hires aren't critical for those organizations as well. They're just amplified in a in a small organization like dark points. And so, um, you know, when we when we you know, when we when we determine we have a need. Um, you know, it's important, right? And we try to collectively, the things that I think have worked well um, are uh, we really work hard to leverage the organization, the relationships that people have in the organization, um, um, our, our networks, my networks, right? Who, um, Astra, our, our capital, their networks, because we want to, you, you know this as, as, as well as anybody, you know, being in, in, in your business, right? If you, if you know someone and you've got experience with someone and you know their capabilities, man, that goes a long ways in, in adding credibility in the hiring process. So we really, we really try to, we try to focus and leverage that. Um, sometimes that works and sometimes, you know, it, it, you can't get the right candidate. Um, you talked about culture, right? Um, that's, that's important, right? It's, it's finding, um, it's finding someone who we really think is going to be a good fit. Um, and it's tough, right? Because it's, it's finding someone who will be a good fit in our culture today, but also knowing where we want to take our culture and how we want to evolve our culture. Will this person be a good fit as we're, as we're looking to, looking to evolve? So, that's an important part of, of what we do, right? And, and sometimes as, as managers, I talk about my, my leadership team all the time, right? I mean, sometimes it's, it's easy to, you know, kind of hand that off or, you know, hand it over to, to you to kind of do the whole process. And, and, and what we try to, try to engage with the team is, is to be very involved because at the end of the day, um, you know, the organization, me, the leadership team and the managers that are actually hiring you know, they, they own that process. They need to be involved in that decision-making process. So there's, uh, there's many important things that are on our plate on a daily basis, but getting the right team members as we bring them into dark points is crucial. And it's one of the higher priorities and you've got to, you got to invest time into that, right? You gotta, you gotta focus on it. Um, and if you don't, you shouldn't be surprised that you, you don't get the, the end result you're looking for. And that's, that's how we approach hiring. And that's how we think about it. Well said, well said. And I love that you said you have the leaders have to be involved. And I know that it's important to all leaders, especially now more than ever. But leaders are very busy and they tend to sometimes, you know, just not give feedback or put this on the, you know, put it on the back burner or get too busy to respond or to look at the resumes. And and the way that talent is flying off the shelves right now, it's so important. And, and you're absolutely right. Your leadership is is very, very involved and committed to the process. So question, when we when talking about leadership and, and Scott, I've known you for a number of years and I know that you are a tremendous leader. So I'd like to know a little bit about, you know, who is Scott Willis as a leader and maybe some of your principles that guide you? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, um, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of fun at the role I have. I have a, I, I have, I, I enjoy what I do, you know, but I, you know, I, my approach to leadership is, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not Scott, right? It's not me, right? It's really, it's a collaborative um, um, team environment um, that I, that I try to create, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, yes, do you have to sometimes have to make a decision, move forward? Of course you do. But I, I work very hard, right, at instilling all the way down the organization. I was in, I was in, uh, I was in the Carolinas last week and we were doing account reviews with the with the Southeast team. And whether you know I'm talking to that that go to market team in that region, right? And I'm trying to instill um, ownership and and you know this is your region. You own it. You make the decisions. You you drive it, right? That's that's important to me. It is a it is a is it it's a collaborative approach. So that's that's one. Um, two is um, you know, uh, communication is, is hugely important to me, right? I, I work very hard at, um, communicating down in the organization and I want communication to come up. I, I would be surprised, um, that, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, maybe even, even to a fault, 
on, you know, filtering down to my leaders, right? I mean, if we've got an issue or we've got a challenge, right? I want it to be out there, right? I want us to own it as a team. I want us to understand it. And if we're not aware of it, right, then there's a risk that that um, it can impact our organization. So that that's been a that's been a big peace of mind. Um, the other piece is, uh, you know, if if you kind of relate back to our culture, um, that's that's kind of big to me is is you know being purpose driven. Right. I, I, I that that to me is one of the most important things that I think I can instill in an organization and that I want all of us to be right. I want us to all wake up and have a purpose in what we're doing. Right. I want us to know what that purpose is. I want us to all collectively buy into that. Um, and and um, to me, that's an important piece of um, of um, of leadership. As uh, as you look at in, in, any individual, I mean, is your is your organization whatever the purpose is, right? Whatever the purpose is, are you are you purpose driven in uh, in uh, in everything that uh, that you do? And I like to feel like uh, in dark points we are, right? I mean, we're we're purpose driven and we're passionate around um, delivering services to our customers, right? Our our uh, our value proposition is not only geographical, right? The definition that I gave of edge. But it's also around customer service, right? It's we want to at a local level, we want to wrap our arms around our customer and we want to deliver best in class solutions. That's purpose driven, right? That is that is that is part of our, our culture and it's what we're trying to instill up and down the up and up and down the organization. Um and and I also, you know, you've you've known me, right? I'm I'm one that um I like to I like to have fun with the team, I like to have fun with our leadership team. Um, I want us to grow. I want us to be successful. I want us to achieve our objectives when we when we set out um, uh, for any any given year. But I also want us to recognize that um, you know we're 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 there with a with if I kind of use the word purpose, we're there with a balance too, right? I mean, people have personal lives, people have family, people have personal interests, and and if you can bring all that together and achieve collectively as an organization um, what you set out to do. Um, you know, I think any any leader of that organization is is going to be viewed as a as a successful leader, and that's that's what I that's what I really try to work towards. So, Scott, tell me about your vision for Dart Points. So, I mean, it's pretty it's it's pretty simple. It's what it's what I it's what I stated earlier, right? We we want to deliver we want to we want to deliver um, uh, world class class solutions, right? Um, into into markets. Um, in a in a price competitive way that delivers the same capability in in Greenville, South Carolina, that you can get in New York or Chicago or LA. Right? We want to be community um, agnostic in terms of what our services and our capabilities are, and it's it's hard, right? We're in an industry that you know at the end of the day, um, it it's driven. It you know investment capital and dollars are driven by where the 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 large populations live right and that's why these major cities are 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 the first ones to receive um, these technologies but we just our our vision for dark points is we want to deliver that same capability at a at a price competitive um, way um, uh, into into uh, enterprises uh, you know uh, K through twelve uh, local government you know state government uh, pick your vertical that we're going into we want to deliver those capabilities into those communities where they live and where they invest um, that we're focused in deploying in. Um, and uh, and uh, we, we want to do it in a way that, that delivers and meets their expectations as if, they were, as if they were living in Dallas or Chicago or New York or LA. That's, that's at, a, at, a, at a real clear level what our vision is and what we're trying to accomplish at our points. So, you know, your, I know it's challenging, like you said, but one thing I love that you said was we really wrap our arms around our customer. And not only that, Scott, but you have a, a strong focus, no matter how challenging it is, you have a focus for people, right? People in these areas that are potentially underserved or businesses, enterprise in these areas that are underserved. And so, you know, you're climbing a mountain to make sure that they're taken care of as well with that purpose in mind. And I, I just love that. It's 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 critical. It's it's you know like I said, beyond geography, it's it's our it's our value proposition, right? I mean, if we're in a if we're in a cloud environment and we're competing against a big public provider of 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 Amazon and they can you know take off and take their services as Amazon, 
we want to wrap them uh, locally around our services and try to keep them in our yeah. in our cloud at a, at a local level, right? And and so to me, uh, that that kind of refers back to the purpose. Um, you know, wrapping wrapping ourselves around our customers and taking care of their needs on a local level. That's what we. That's really what drives us in in what we try to accomplish on a day to day basis. And, and no matter you know the advancements of technology, that's what we really want as humans, right? We still want someone who's going to be there, who's going to care, and who's going to respond. And and you know we want that high touch connection. So um, Scott, this is this has been fantastic. Tell me about uh, are you hiring? First of all, I know you are. Uh, where can we learn more about your open jobs? Learn more about Darpoint. Yeah, definitely hiring. You you know that you're you're helping us and and working on a few key key hires, and that's going to continue, right? We're growing and and expanding, and and we need we need you know we need the right uh, people with the right skill sets and the right mindset that works within our culture to help us you know help us grow as we're as we're going down this journey. And on information, yeah, listen, there's there's a number of ways to reach into Dar Points, um, but certainly you know darpoints.com. If you hit our if you hit our website, all the information about Dart Points, how to how to access or get into Dart Points, uh, um, uh, any white papers, you know, uh, anything about our locations, our data centers, it's all there. So anything that uh, that you that you would initially need to start uh, to understand who Dart Points is, and then and then you can contact us, and we will we will quickly follow up and 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 work with you. So, but that's a good starting point on anything about Dart Points is uh, DartPoints.com. Wonderful. Scott, thanks so much for joining me today on the show. I'm so, I, again, I could, I could talk to you forever. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for your friendship and thank you for all you're doing in the industry. No, I enjoy it. Thanks, Carrie. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. All righty. Take care. Thank you for listening to another informative episode of 5G Talent Talk brought to you by RCR Wireless News, Telecom Careers, and Broadstaff Talent Solutions. As we advance into the future, we promise to bring you the resources you need to navigate this ever-changing landscape of 5G to help you attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. To access the show notes or leave a review, visit broadstaffglobal.com. Until next time.